thank you again to all of you for joining us in our session. Um, we are going to talk about better classroom management. Once and for all, you can solve that discipline problem, which is for many teachers is the biggest challenge. Lalo na ibang-ibang klase na ang mga kabataan ngayon, di ba? Alam, alam, alam natin na um, it has not been easy, especially since we are dealing with um, students of this generation who seem to be uh, of a different mindset, <laughs> parang ibang klase. Even the character, the attitude, the outlook, the behavior, nagiba. So. Um, the seminar I'm going to pass on to you, I'm going to give you today, is like a summary of the session we had when I brought the number one teacher trainer in the world, Dr. Harry K. Wong. I brought him to Manila. He is the author of the best-selling book on classroom management, First Days of School. And um, he came with his wife and they spoke in SMX to 7,000 teachers, 3,000 in the morning and then 4,000 in the afternoon. I'm going to share with you his strategies, his principles of um, managing a class. In fact, our principle is stop disciplining and start managing. That's what we are supposed to be doing. And if we don't know how to manage a class, we end up disciplining. Shouting, screaming, yelling, <laughs> punishing. I know some teachers, that's the only way they can get the students to do what they want them to do, by threatening, punishing. No, we have to um, get rid of that kind of strategy and instead learn how can I make my students do what I want them to do without ever having to resort to shouting, screaming, yelling. Um, they spoke in SMX and I had to pay him 1 million pesos <laughs> to come here, fly them business class, uh, stay in Shangri-La Hotel for a few days. Um, it was very expensive. But now you don't have to spend 1 million. I'm going to pass on to you many of the most important elements or important um, tips, items from uh, their lecture. So if you are going to buy any book on classroom management, if, if you're going to buy only one book on classroom management, it will have to be this, the book of Harry and Rosemary Wong, First Days of School. Okay, so sabi ko kanina, many teachers left the profession because of failure in classroom management. Pero teka muna. Baka naman hindi classroom management ang problema. According to Harry Wong, here are warning signs of bad teaching. If the teacher shows little knowledge of the subject matter, he or she is supposed to be teaching, I, you can be sure. Bad teaching is happening there. Unfortunately, this happens. Ano, minsan, nagbukas na yung school year, tapos sasabihin ni principal, ay, Mrs. Batong Dakal, Pwedeng ikaw humawak nito, nag-resign bigla si ano, uh, yung teacher assigned to do this. And peer, poor Mrs. Batong Bakal, who is an art teacher, suddenly has to teach science or math or English, which is not her specialty. So, poor teaching, bad teaching happens there because she may have little knowledge of the subject matter or lacks basic academic skills. Or they hold low expectations for students. Alam niyo yung mga teacher na pumasok ng classroom tapos sasabihin na class, kalahati sa inyo dito, babagsak. Ayan. Ang akala niya, eh, with that, she is challenging the students. No, that's low expectation. And chances are, you're right. Magiging prophetic ka. They will not exert effort because that is your expectation of them. Number four makes little effort to maintain discipline. I hear students complain about that. Sir, alam mo, hindi namin maintindihan yung tinuturo ni ma'am kasi ang ingay ng class, ang ingay ng class, hindi kayang disiplinahin ng teacher ang mga sudyante. And he or she is not exerting enough effort to, to maintain discipline. 
Ah, sabi ni Harry Wong, chances are bad teaching is happening there. Number five, does not focus on academic goals. Yan. Yung bang kung ano-ano na lang ang uh, um, papagawa sa mga estudyante, minsan natatanong nila, parang wala namang kinalaman itong project dito sa um, reading materials na binigay ni ma'am. Parang pinagsayaw lang kami na nakasuot ng chemical elements ang letters, ganyan. As a, as a learning doon. <laughs> Where is academic goal there? Number six, cannot communicate knowledge in an interesting way. Yan. Di ba? Maraming mga estudyante, ganyan ang kanilang complain. The teacher is boring. The subject is boring. School is boring. They don't want to go to the classroom. Number seven, gives disorganized lessons and vague careless assignments. Yan. Especially yan yung hindi maintindihan bakit pinagawa sa atin ito ni ma'am. Parang hindi naman ito ano, um, lapat na lapat dun sa pinag-aaralan natin sa dinidiscuss sa classroom. Kasi minsan may ganyan teachers. Ano, magbibigay ng assignment para lang masabi na nagbigay ng assignment. Magbibigay ng project just to keep the students busy. <laughs> Disorganized, vague, careless assignments. Number eight does not assign homework on a regular basis. Number nine, is not aware of your child's strengths, weaknesses, and interests. Alam nyo, sayang na sayang, halimbawa, one whole year sa loob ng classroom mo isang studyante. Tapos, he, she goes to the next level, to the next grade level, or the next year level. Tapos, dun mo lang mababalitaan, yung studyante pala yun, na nasa classroom mo for one whole year, is one of the best pianists in the world. But you never knew that because you never bothered to find out, you never bothered to know their strengths, weaknesses, and interests. Or uh, whatever other strengths, weaknesses, or, or interests they have, um, not necessarily in skills in playing the piano. Now, Warning bad teaching. Eh. Warning signs of bad teaching. So, dapat 13. Punuin natin yung 13. Number 10. Shows little enthusiasm for her work. Minsan may ganyan na akong teacher na nakikita na parang pag pumapasok ng classroom, ang feeling nila parang they're being tortured. Ayan. <laughs> yung para bang pinapahirapan sila para mag-report ng walang enthusiasm. Number 11. Belittles student efforts. Number 12 shows no interest in communicating with parents. Um, teachers, the parents are our partners. We have to get them to collaborate with us. They're not enemies. They're not people in the other side of the camp. Let's communicate with them. Halimbawa, ang estudyante mo sa klase, parang laging late, laging absent. Ah, maybe it's time to send a note to the parents to communicate to them na, uh, yung anak ninyo, if he continues, if she continues being absent, she's missing a lot, she might have a hard time in the um, um, exams. What can we do to help your son, your daughter? You see, kay, kailangan natin ng tulong nila kasi sila ang magsisiguro sa bahay na oh, leave early para wag kang malay, para wag kang absent. Na naman. So, um, they are our collaborators. Or they are the ones who are going to check on their son, on their daughter, na nag-aaral to prepare for your exam. So that pag siya ay bumagsak, walang reklamo ang parents later on na you did not help enough. Our child, our son, our daughter. I did. I tried to help. In fact, I asked you to help me by supervising them at home, by suggesting um, that they spend more time in studying. Parents are our collaborators. And finally, number 13, which is the opposite of what we have talked about the first four days, bad teaching is happening if the teacher exhibits unsound character or unprofessional behavior. Kasi di ba sabi natin, repeatedly, there is no other be better way, there is no other better, more effective way to teach character than through the example of our life. Through our example. Eh, pero kung bad example ang teacher, unprofessional, um, no character, nagmumura, 
resorting to shouting, screaming, yelling, insulting, hurting, or harming the students, uh, bad teaching will be happening there. Okay, so now, um, sabi ko kanina, if there's only one book you're going to buy on, character, on uh, classroom management, it will have to be First Days of School. Alam nyo kung may isang magazine lang na bibili ng skwelahan ninyo for teachers. Ito yun, Educational Leadership. The best magazine that you can share with your teachers. It contains um, scholar, scholarly articles, studies, research being done on learning, on teaching, on education. It's fantastic. And one of the best studies they ever made, one of the most important landmark studies they ever had is this study that spanned 50 years. 50 years, young research, simply researching on what are the top three traits of an effective teacher. They interviewed thousands of students, thousands of um, teachers, thousands of parents, thousands of administrators, asking them, what are the top traits that you saw in effective teachers you've ever had, you've ever seen, you've ever attended? And so they gave the top traits. And here are the top three that came out among all the traits that were given by the thousands who were interviewed. These are the top three that came out. Number one, which is our topic for this session today, sabi ng research nila, an effective teacher is a good classroom manager. You see, um, kahit anong um, dami ng studyante mo sa loob ng classroom, kung ang teacher, effective class manager, learning can still happen. Kahit anong luma ng mga gamit, yung gamit nyo pa, overhead projector, wala pang video projector, wala pang laptop, kahit na, if the teacher is an effective classroom manager, learning can happen. Number two, they also discovered an effective teacher designs lessons to reach mastery. Hindi ako fan ng mga teacher na magsasabing um, alam niyo yung uh, sasabihin ng teacher sa mga estudyante niya. Class, kalahati sa inyo bumagsak. Pwes, bahala kayo sa buhay ninyo. Hindi ko nakasalanan yan. Mag-aral kayo. Ha? Teka muna, parang one half of the class is too many. Hindi kaya may mali in the way you designed your lessons. <laughs> Hindi kaya you could have taught it better, designed your classes and lectures better so that they are able to reach mastery. That's second trait of an effective teacher. By design, the teacher teaches for the students to reach mastery. Okay? Uh, hindi ako fan ng mga teachers na magsasabi, class, I am a summa cum laude graduate ha? Kaya uh, kung kayo bumagsak sa klase ko, pues wala na akong pakialam dyan. Ay, no, they couldn't care less about your summa, manya, or cum laude. They're more concerned about paano mo ituturo sa amin na maiintindihan amin. Okay? So, um, minsan kasi may, may nakikita tayong ganyan, ano? napakatalino, napakatalino ng teacher. Pero ibang klase yung talino na you understand the lesson and then, the ability to be able to teach a subject in a way that the students will learn, will understand, and will reach mastery. Okay? That's the second top trait of an effective teacher. Number three, an effective teacher. Ito ang third na lumabas dun sa 50-year study. An effective teacher has positive expectation that students will be successful. Your expectation matters. Okay? Um, the teacher is a very crucial element in learning. Pero kung ang, the way we teach is parang um, we look down on the students, we think they are only hanggang dito lang sila and we don't push them enough and motivate them enough, then talagang hanggang dun lang sila aabot. 
because that is your expectation. Positive expectation, that matters a great deal. And the research also tells us the number one factor governing learning is classroom management, not discipline. Okay, I know some of you may be saying, nadinig ko na to sa teachers eh. Sir, Mr. Antoy, kung alam mo lang yung classing estudyante namin, walang disiplina, paano sila matututo kung wala silang disiplina? Yes, but even with that kind of discipline, if the teacher knows how to manage, learning can still happen. Not self-esteem. Ay, Mr. Antoy, kung kilala mo lang ang mga estudyante namin, wala silang motivation kasi ang baba ng tingin nila sa sarili nila. Um, yes, that's, that too is part of classroom management that you are able to get the students go beyond the minimum and go beyond what merely they think they are and to think that they can achieve, they will achieve. So it's a research that tells us this, the number one factor governing learning is not discipline, not self-esteem, not motivation, not class size. Don't complain kung 50, 50 students ang nasa classroom ko. Paano sila matututo? Classroom management will enable them to learn. And I'm going to show you strategies precisely on how we can get 50 students inside the classroom all working hard to learn, to master the subject matter, and to be successful in spite of the number of students inside the classroom. So, sabi ko to kanina, stop disciplining and start managing. Okay? Stop disciplining and start managing. You don't need to discipline if you know how to manage. Let me differentiate. Those are two totally different things. Stewardesses in airlines. You know, coming here to Iloilo, I'm now in Iloilo uh, giving you this seminar from uh, Westbridge, uh, a school here in Iloilo. Coming here to Iloilo, I had to, uh, I had to take Cebu Pacific. Um, tomorrow, I will take Philippine Airlines going back. Pero kahit anong airlines ang sakyan mo, stewardesses do not discipline. They manage. And how do they manage? Look at kahit anong eroplanong sasakyan mo, Bago mag take off, what do they do? They review the procedures, not the rules. They review the procedures. And what are the procedures? Open the window shade, close the table in front of you, straighten up the chair, fasten the seat belt. Kahit anong airlines, United Airlines, American Airlines, Philippine Airlines, lahat ng air, uh, airlines. Pare-pareho ang procedures. Teachers, something to think about. Students get confused when they enter a classroom. Iba ang procedure nitong teacher. Tapos another classroom, iba rin ang procedure nitong other teacher. And students will start saying, bakit bawal lumipat ng upuan? Bakit kay Mrs. Reyes? Pwede naman. Doon sa kay Mrs. Gatmaitan? Pwede naman. Dito? Ba bakit hindi? You see what happens? They get confused. Well, uh, a good school, a good uh, school with teachers who really uh, work as a team, kahit anong classroom ang pasukin ng mga sudyante, the procedures are the same. You might want to spend, during the summer break, to prepare for the new school year, you might want to spend a workshop, a day or two workshop, make your procedures uniform so that any teacher, uh, any classroom, any subject, the procedures are the same, like in the airlines. Kahit anong aeroplanong sakyan mo, pare-pareho ang expectations of them. Remember, Itong mga opening window shade, fastening the seatbelt, they're not rules. They are procedures. That's how you manage by putting procedures in place, teaching the students procedures, making them do the procedures. And then what happens after uh, reviewing the procedures, what do the stewardesses do? Remember, they're managing, they're not disciplining. This is what stewardesses do after reviewing the procedures. They start going around. 
checking that everyone has followed the procedures. If they see someone not following a procedure, what do they do? Uh, sir, please open the window shade. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, uh, paki straight, ng chair. Thank you. Sir, the seat belt. They only do two things. They call you ma'am or sir, and then they tell you exactly what they want you to do. Yun lang, two things. They call you ma'am or sir, and then they tell you exactly what they want you to do. That's managing a class. John, please be seated. Joanna, eyes here on the board. Joey, um, look at the uh, eyes on your own paper. Those are the only two things. You call the name and then you tell the person exactly what you want the person to do. But even better yet, late I'm going to teach you strategies where you don't even need to call the name and tell him what you want to do. You just have to resort to certain strategies that I'm going to share with you. That's why sometimes ang title nito, how to get your students to do what you want them to do without having to raise your voice or shout, or scream, or yell. Now, that is managing. This is what stewardesses will do if they're not managing, they're disciplining. Remember what I'm doing. I'm trying to differentiate discipline and classroom management. If stewardesses are disciplining, not managing, ganitong gagawin ng, ng stewardess. Iikot siya, di ba? After reviewing the procedures, iikot yan. Tapos pag may nakitang hindi sumunod, Sir, ilang beses ko ba dapat sabihin sa iyo na dapat makafasin ng seatbelt mo? Ma'am, hindi nyo ba nadinig yung announcement? Open the window shade? Kailangan ko ba tagalugin pa sa inyo? <laughs> Di ba ganyan ang mga teachers pag nagdidisiplina? John, how many times do I have to tell you? And then sasabihin ni John, Ma'am, 60 times? <laughs> Tapos ikaw, galit na galit ka. Piloso itong batang to. Ah. Siyempre, sumagot siya kasi tinanong mo how many times. Don't ask how many times. <laughs> o kaya, minsan, may kilala akong teacher. Ang akala nila, the harsher their words, the more disciplined the students will become. Joey, John, kanina pa kayo, usap ng usap dyan. Pag uuntugin ko kayo, uh, pag bubuhol-buholin ko kayo, makita mo lang kung anong... Uh, and they think by being harsh, the more disciplined John and Joey will become. No, they're not going to be disciplined. They're not even going to listen to you. They will just be full of resentments. Stop disciplining and start managing. That's the principle. Okay? Again, I repeat, if you know how to manage, you will not have to discipline. So, stewardesses, um, do not discipline, they manage. Sir, the seatbelt, please. Ma'am, the chair, please. Uh, sir, the table, please. Sir or ma'am, and then exactly what you want them to do, you say it. That's managing. Okay, now, sabi ng research, the best way to manage is to have procedures and routines. I repeat, this is not the same as rules, okay? In the same way na uh, opening the window shade is not a rule. It's just what you want them to do. Fastening the seatbelt is not a rule. It's just how you want them to ride an airplane when uh, we are about to take off. It's just what you want them to follow. That's what we should be doing inside the classroom if we are to manage teaching students procedures, making them do the procedures over and over until they become routines. Kasi, di ba, gusto natin ng responsableng estudyante. Well, number one, the only way you can have responsible students is if you have procedures and routines which the students can be responsible to. You see, they are not responsible to you. It's the procedures and routines that you make them responsible to. Kaya wag ka magalit pag hindi sumusunod yung bata. He is not challenging your authority. May ganyang teacher, di ba? Pagka sinabihan si John, 
Jan, ilang beses ka ba na pag, pagsabihan, stop talking, are you challenging my authority? Kaya, di ba may ganyang mga teachers, para bang it's all about them. And then they feel hurt, they feel, no, it's the procedures that John is not being responsible to. But did you teach them the procedures? Did you make him responsible to the procedures so that you don't have to ask, are you challenging my authority? Number two, when students know how the class is run, I tell you, they will more willingly do whatever you want them to do. Okay, so procedures. Um, let's differentiate procedures and routines. It's on definition. Procedures, what you simply want students to do. How do you want them to recite if they need, if you want the recitation? How do you want them to head the papers? Do you want them to put full name or nickname? Do you want them to put the subject? Do you want them to put the date? How? What do you want students to do? Middle of the school year, dapat hindi na nagtatanong ang sudyante, Ma'am, do we need to put our names? Ma'am, do we need to put our class numbers? Ma'am, do we have to put the date? In the first days of school, ah, kaya pala ganun yung title ng libro ni Harry Wong, First Days of School. In the first days of school, we should be teaching and rehearsing the procedures. Rehearsing and practicing over and over until they become routines. How to form a line. How to proceed to the chapel. How to dismiss a class. How to start a class. All of them are procedures. How do you start um, your class, do you expect them to be standing by their desk and then you lead the prayer, you have somebody to lead the prayer or you greet them good morning first? What is your procedure? If the students know and rehearse, yun yung pagkukulang by the way ng maraming skwelahan, ng maraming teachers. May procedure nga sila, malinaw nga sa isip ng sa, in the mind of the teacher, malinaw kung ano yung procedure. Pero hindi nila ni rehearse with the students. That's why they don't become routines. Okay? So those that's the difference between procedures and routines. Let me put it cleanly, uh, clear, clearly and plainly. The number one problem in the, in the classroom is not discipline. It's not about John talking out of turns, Joanna standing up without permission, Joey uh, making noise and talking to his classmates. No, that's not the problem there. It's the lack of procedures and routines. So what's your procedure if you are lecturing? Do you expect them to just sit down and uh, quiet, uh, be quiet and listen? Did you announce that procedure and did you rehearse it with them? Okay, so here are some samples of procedures and routines that you should teach and then Rehearse, rehearse again and again until they, it becomes routine in the first days of school. Okay, that's why on day one of the school year, um, don't get into the classes right away. Don't go into academics right away. Spend the first period, the first hours, the first days teaching the procedures and then rehearsing it to the point that after the fourth or fifth day, of rehearsing them the whole school year, you will never have to stop to discipline. You will never have to stop to call the attention of John, Joey, Joanna. They are just following the procedures throughout. I'll give you some examples. Passing in papers. Some of you, in the face-to-face -face setup, of course, in the online classes, iba ang sistema ng passing in of papers. Okay, class, I need to receive in my email by this time, on this day, your essay, your submission, your module, di ba? Now, inside the classroom, sabi ni Harry Wong, the worst way to ask for students to pass the paper is by saying, okay, time's up, pass the papers forward. Maraming teachers, ganyan ang expression, di ba? Stop, okay, stop working, time's up, pass the papers forward. Now, imagine a classroom 
with students arranged in rows. They are not angels. Kaya pag sabi mong stop writing, pass the papers forward. Do all of them actually stop writing and then pass the papers? My, um, or the students in front look backwards and say, may I have your paper, please? Of course not. May mga estudyante kang pasaway. Hindi titigil ng sumasagot sa exam. Hindi magpapasa ng paper until you actually get angry, get upset, and shout, okay, paper is not in, I will not collect anymore. <laughs> Tsaka lang sila magpapasa ng paper. Now, I learned it from Harry Wong. I teach the procedure to my students and we rehearse it. That, that's a crucial thing. You have to re rehearse this. Okay, class, here is how I expect you to pass papers, okay? I will say, okay, class, at the count of five, all papers to the front. Yan. Malinaw na kung ano yung gusto mo. <coughs> Time is so precious, you're only allotting five seconds. At the count of five, all papers to the front. And here is how it's going to be done. Okay, I, I face the class. And then may mga rows, right? And then sasabihin ko, okay, at the count of five, all papers to the aisles. Five. Yan. Prinactice namin to. Five, when I say five, yung mga students na nasa dulo ng rows to the left and to the right, they are passing their paper towards the aisle. If they are, if the aisle is to the right, then they pass the paper to the right. Um, if the aisle is to the left, then they pass the paper to the um, to their left. Now, see what I'm doing. I didn't ask them to pass the papers forward. Ang problema sa pass the papers forward is the person in front who is still writing does not even see, does not even know that the person behind him or her is passing the paper. Kaya anong gagawin nung nasa likod ay kailangang hampasin niya. Yan. Kailangan hampasin niya yung uh, nasa harap niya and then the person in front will have to look back, get angry. Ano ba? Hindi pa ako tapos. Yan. You have a class that erupts into a chaos and noise simply because you said pass the papers forward. I don't ask them to pass forward. I ask them to pass to the aisles. Now, when, they, when I say five, the persons in the last row will be passing on. And the person here, that's within his peripheral vision. Kita niya na ang, yung nasa tabi niya nagpapasa ng paper. Hindi na siya kailangang hampasin. Four. You remember, I said at the count of five. So I say five. The last persons on the end rows will be passing. Four. That means the next person in the next row is already passing his paper. He has put his paper on top of the paper of the one that was passed to him. And then he is now passing to the person next to him. Three means the dapat nandun sa susunod. Two and one. By the time I reach one, all the papers should be along the aisles already. And I just have to walk down the aisles, collecting them, saying, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It works. Now, if you see someone not following the procedure, don't get angry, don't get mad, don't get upset. He is not challenging your authority. He is just not following the procedure. So what do you do? You see John not passing the paper properly or not passing according to how you rehearsed it. It's enough to say, John, what's the procedure, please? He will do it correctly. Thank you. Day two. Okay, let's rehearse it again. What we, what I taught you yesterday, um, one for sheet of paper, please pass to the middle of the aisle. Five, four, and then you see Jan not passing. Don't get angry. It's enough. Say, Jan, what's the procedure, please? He will do it. Thank you. It's just that. Day 150, John, what's the procedure, please? Day 180, John, what's the procedure, please? Day 200, final exam, last day of the school year. You never shouted, you never screamed, you never yelled. You only had to say, John, what's the procedure, please? And he will pass properly.
that's more beneficial to you. Your blood pressure will not have to zoom up <laughs> and beneficial for the class. They will never have to see you shouting, screaming, yelling, getting upset. It works. It works. I tell you, if right now you're already thinking, ay nako, Mr. Antoy, kung kilala mo lang ang mga estudyante namin sa eskwelahan, that will not work. Well, I assure you, it will not work if that's our mindset. But if right now you're thinking, ho nga, gagawin ko yan, i -re rehearse namin until it becomes routine so that when I say, okay, papers at the, um, papers at the count of five, uh, I need it here, five, four. Now, take note, huh? you remember, sabi ko at the count of five. I don't say one, two, three, four, five because that can still go to six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pero if I say, okay, at the count of five, all papers to the aisles, five, four, three, two, and one. Wala ka nang maidadagdag na. 0.75, 0.50, hindi, wala. Malinaw yun. You want the papers in. Heading of papers. Student should not be asking, ma'am, do we need to put the date? Ma'am, do we need to put the section? Ma'am, do we need to put the subject? If this is standard in your school, in whatever classroom, in whatever subject, they will never have to ask it. That every time they have to um, pass a piece of paper, one fourth, one whole, one uh, full sheet, one half, alam na nila. They have to put their full name, not nickname. They have to put the date on the right side. Make it standard and then make it just merely a procedure. Rehearse it until it becomes the most natural thing for them to do. Procedure to rehearse entering the classroom. When they want to ask a question, do you expect them to just raise their hand? Kasi kung wala kang procedure na tinuro, ah, nandyan yung problema, ma'am, 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 sir, sir. O kaya yung sudyante, isisigaw na lang yung um, sagot. Because you did not teach the procedure, they don't know what to follow, how to do the recitation, or if they need to ask a question. Getting to work immediately. My procedure in my class is, uh, I before the students come inside the classroom, nasulat ko na sa board yung, um, while waiting for the others, read page 25, answer this question. You see? So that it becomes a habit, it becomes a procedure. As soon as they get to their desk, they look at the board and they start working. Teachers, the bell is not the one that starts the class. The students getting to work, that's what will start the class. You are not just like a um, anong tawag dyan, victim of uh, bell, ng timer. Tapos pag na late pa yung bell, o ano, late ang class mo. No. Um, I make it a habit that the students get to work right away as soon as um, they get inside the classroom. They look at the board. It is a procedure and they start working. When teacher is tardy, many schools, walang procedure. Pag ang teacher ay late, hindi na nakadating sa classroom on time. So what happens in many classrooms around the world? The bell rings. Walang teacher. Ah. The classroom turns into a zoo and the students start jumping up and down like monkeys and apes. <laughs> and that's when trouble usually happens, no? Pag walang teacher. Not me. I have a procedure and we rehearsed it. Okay, class, here's the procedure. If the bell rings and there's no teacher inside the classroom, okay? Here's the procedure. The bell rings. Everybody sit down. President and class president, vice president come to the front of the class. Secretary, go to the office to ask, is Mrs. So-and-so here? Is Mr. So-and-so here? Is there a substitute teacher? We don't have a teacher in the classroom. That's the procedure so that if it happens na late ang teacher, then problem, the class is in order. The president and the vice president take over. They go in front and watch over the class, telling them to keep uh, quiet and keep order. These are procedures that we should have and rehearse until they become routines. More, here are some more other procedures and routines that you should teach. You can have as many, as many 
procedures that you want to put in place for as long as you don't just teach it, you rehearse it over and over. Kaya first days of school, supposed to be spent on this, practicing, rehearsing the procedures. How do you end the, uh, the period or during class dismissal? Do you expect them to stand by their desk? Do you say something like, okay, let's um, end the class with a prayer? The, what's the procedure? You want them to be standing by their desk, facing you, ready to do the end of the day prayer or prayer at the end of the class. And then you will say, goodbye class, and they're supposed to answer, goodbye and thank you, Mr. Antoy. And then that's it, they're dismissed. They can go to their lockers to get their materials for the next period. If you don't have that procedure, you will have to shout, scream, and yell because hindi mo pa nga dismiss. they start going to the locker, they start asking classmates, ano next subject? Ano, ano bang itatanong sa quiz? Ano bang lalabas sa quiz? The class is very noisy and uh, you have to raise your voice more loudly to be heard para lang mapa, um, ma, masabihan sila na stop talking, uh, go to your desk, we will first do the closing prayer. If this is a procedure, if that has become a routine, no need to shout, scream, or yell. Same thing with participation in class discussion. When a student needs paper or ball pen, I mean, let's face it, these are teenagers, these are kids, and sometimes nawala yung paper nila, nawala. Now, what do you, how, what is a procedure? If they need to ask from a classmate or get to the locker to, do, they, do you want them to raise their hand and point to the locker and you, they have to wait for you to say, go ahead, or what is the procedure? Now, let me give you some samples of coming to attention as a way of managing the class. And it's, it's amazing. If you have procedures to call the class to attention, you will never have to get tired of shouting, screaming, yelling. Inefficient teachers who have no procedures and routines and they want the class to stop talking, keep quiet, they have to raise their voice because kailangan labanan nila yung noise level. Eh. Ah, here's one strategy from Harry Wong. And you teach it to the class and you rehearse it. Okay, class, if, for example, I need you to keep quiet because I need to make an announcement, I will come to the middle of the classroom and calmly raise my hand. I'll just calmly raise my hand like that. If you see, here's the procedure class, here's the procedure. If you see the teacher with his hand calmly raised like that, it means salami, salami. Stop and look at me, salami. <laughs> okay, that's one strategy. Which means if you see the teacher with his hand raised like that, it means stop whatever you're doing, look at the teacher, if beside you, there's a student facing the other way, hindi niya nakikita yung teacher na nakataas ang kamay, you tap him or her on the shoulder and point to the teacher. Salami. Okay? Let's rehearse it. Ganyan. This is the rehearsal. Get a partner, and I will give you time, one minute, to talk with each other uh, what I did last summer. Uh, how I spend my, um, my lockdown, okay? Get a partner and start talking. Yan. Siyempre, sa umpisa, mababa pa yung noise level. And then, 30 seconds, tumataas ang noise level. Ang ingay na kasi everybody now is um, um, telling stories excitedly. And then you go to the middle of the class calmly and you raise your hand. Now, John is still talking. Don't get mad. He's not challenging your authority. You simply say, John, what's the procedure, please? He will stop talking and look at you. Thank you. Now, in the beginning, it may take three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. It's okay. Let's rehearse it again. Okay, this time, um, change partners or this time, Yung isang nakikinig, siya naman magkikwento ngayon what I did last summer. Okay, go. 
and then you eat until the noise level is very high. And then you go to the middle of the room and calmly raise your hand and chances are three seconds, even two seconds, everyone will stop and be looking at you. It works. It works, especially if you are able to make it a routine. And I make my students do a lot of like that, partner discussion, get a partner and then discuss a question that is posted on the board. Get a partner and then um, share the, um, your answer to the question. And I will not have to shout, scream, or yell to get them to stop talking and look at me. Now, sometimes I tell them, get a partner and stay wherever you want inside the classroom. Some will sit at the back. Nakaupo sila, dun sila magdi-discuss. Some others nandun, behind the lockers. Okay, the salami will not be easy because they're not looking at you. Okay, I have the bell method to get the students to come to attention. Bell method. Okay, class, here's the procedure. If I ring the bell, ding, I'm going to count three, two, and one. By the time I reach one, I expect you to stop whatever you're saying, even if you're in the middle of the sentence. No need to stand up from where you are. Just stop and look at me because I need to make an announcement. Let's try it. Go to different parts of the room and then... I ring the bell, ting, and they look at me, three, two, and one. There comes a time, it's such a routine, you don't need to count. They know it. As soon as they hear the bell, they stop whatever they're saying, even if it's in the middle of a sentence, and they look at you, and you're ready to make an announcement or to say something, and you never even raised your voice you never even have to compete with the noise of the class now I, I mentioned noise there is such a thing as noise of learning noise the, that is um, students actually processing things it's not a noise na simply because maingay boisterous and um, senseless ang pinag ng mga bata okay and you can think up of another workshop for you is the summer. Write down all those procedures. You want to be uniform among all the different classes, among all the different subjects, and find a way by which you can get the student to rehearse this. It works. And that's the reason why Harry Wong's book is the best-selling book on class management more than 5 million copies sold. He even, have, he even has their pages and pages of list of procedures that you can teach the students. Now, most procedures you will have to teach at the start of the school year, first days of school. Some procedures, tinuturo nyo at certain points of the year. Now, for example, graduation, where you expect them to get the diploma with the left hand, shake the hand of the principal with the right, go walk to the center of the stage and take a bow. That's not rule. That's a procedure. Diba? And you rehearse it over and over until it becomes automatic, until it becomes a routine. Graduation time comes. They know exactly what to do. They will not be at a loss. You see, we also do it. I mean, we have been doing it. Or middle of the school year um, when you are preparing for the foundation day. Okay, dun gagawin. Dun yung ituro yung the procedure in welcoming parents to our school. And you rehearse it, you teach it to them, and then you rehearse it until it becomes automatic. They know exactly what you want them to do. This is the principle. It's the procedures that set up the class for achievement to take place because you will never have to shout, scream, or yell. They get to work as soon as they enter the classroom and that's what they do the whole day just following procedures. One after another, they are learning the whole time. Okay, now this is a major part. I 
and it's almost been an hour that I have been talking, and so I would like to give uh, a little break. We will first pause the recording. Okay, let's go now to this uh, Kohlberg Six Levels of Moral Development. Tinanong ni Kohlberg, a philosopher, a psychiatrist, a researcher, bakit nagpapakabait ang isang tao? And he discovered there are six levels. Bakit gumagawa ng kabutihan na tama ang isang tao? And we'll, uh, let's apply this to classroom management, classroom disciplining. Lowest level, kung bakit gumagawa ng mabuti, kabutihan ng isang tao is, remember, this is the lowest level. I don't want to get into trouble. Yan. Meaning to say, yung bata gagawa lang ng mabuti kasi sabi ni ma'am may sanction, may detention. Ayaw akong madususpend, ayaw akong madetain. I better behave. And this is the lowest. And yet some of us are guilty when we see things like, class, you better watch out, you better watch out. Makikita nyo, makikita nyo. I will punish you. Sabihin nila, Sir, anong makikita namin? <laughs> Ma'am, anong makikita namin? Um, if a person behaves only to avoid punishment, that's the lowest level. So, we should not be resorting to um, you better behave or else. Yeah, because that's fostering the lowest level of moral development. Here's the second level. I want a reward. Yeah, mahilig tayo dyan sa ano. Uh, lower grades, pri uh, primary school, preschool, di ba? Um, if you behave, you're going to get a star on your um, uh, dito sa kamay. I'm going to put there on your paper, uh, good boy, good girl, award. Or I better behave kasi sabi ni mame, we will watch a movie in the class if we get good grades. I want a reward. That's pretty better than just avoiding a punishment. But still, sabi ni Rafe Esquith, we can do better than that. We can do better in um, making the students choose to do good than just um, threatening or just offering a reward. Besides, in real life, in real life, what we see is sometimes kahit anong ganda ng trabaho mo, aba, the reward doesn't come. <laughs> but that's not the reason for you to stop doing the good. You do the good because it's the right thing to do. It's the most noble thing to do, even if the reward doesn't come. Here's third level of moral development. I want to please somebody. O nga, may mga ganyang studyante, ano? They study hard. They behave because they want to please their parents. Or even sa skwelahan may ganyan. They want to please the teacher. Minsan, awag natin sa kanila, sip-sip. <laughs> There's... There are people who are like that. They're only doing the right thing because they want to please somebody. Again, the problem here is in real life. Minan, kahit anong ganda ng trabaho mo, hindi mo at if the, the principal is pleased, the supervisor is pleased, if the boss is pleased, we can still do better than this. Here's the fourth level according to Kohlberg of moral development. I follow the rules. May mga ganyan, di ba? Bata na um, it's not because they are avoiding a punishment. It's not because there's a reward. Basta, we follow the rules. Now, the problem in this, I mean, this is already better than the first three. But the problem with I follow the rules, sometimes in life, you have to go beyond the rules. Heroes, for example, Broke rules, that's their hero. So Rizal went against um, the Spaniards, uh, broke rules. Even Jesus Christ broke rules. He performed miracles on a Sabbath. <laughs> Why? Because uh, there's something greater than rules. Charity, love for mankind, love for people, love for humanity, care for souls. That's even more important than simply following the rules. Here's number five. And if you teachers make your students reach level five of moral development, ay napakaganda na. I am considerate of other people. Class, please study hard. 
your parents are sacrificing so much to get you to study in this school. That's being considerate of the sacrifice of the parents. Please listen, pay attention to the teacher. Pinaghirapan niya itong lesson na to. Pinaghandaan niya itong class na to. Hinandaan niya ng maraming learning materials, audiovisual aids para makatulong sa be considerate be considerate naman of the sacrifice of the teacher. Oh, di ba? Maganda yun kesa, naku, I better listen kasi may detention pag nahuli ko ni ma'am. May reward pagka na maganda ang grade natin. Um, I'm just trying to please somebody. I am following, no, do the right things because we're considerate of other people. But here's the highest level of moral development. I have a personal code of behavior and I follow it. That's why kahapon pinag-usapan natin class advisor. Class advisor is the one capable of saying class, please study hard, okay? Because you carry the name of our class. Ah, ibig sabihin napaliwanag niya na sa mga estudyante. Being part of our class means we have core values. Being part of our class means meron tayong sinusunod na mga prinsipyo na code of behavior. That's the highest level of moral development. Good parents also do it. Good parents, elder children, man, magpakabuti kang tao ha. Alam mo ang pangalan din. Yan. Ibig sabihin, yung pangalan na yan, may katumbas na yan ng values, virtues, uprightness, being good, doing good, being considerate, or teachers. You should be able to say, class, please behave inside the school or outside. Why? Not because I'm going to punish you, not because I'm offering a reward, not because it's a rule, because you carry the name of our school. And kung napaliwanag na natin sa kala, ang ibig sabihin ng being a student of this school that has core values, then we are fostering level six of moral development. And more and more, this is how we should be disciplining. Make the students understand from the very beginning, from the first days of school, what it means to be part of your class. So that you can say things like, class, come on. You belong to this grade 7D section that, that has um, a reputation to maintain one of excellence and goodness. Personal code of behavior, and I live by it or I follow it. Those are the six levels of moral development. Okay? Less and less of you better watch out or else I will punish you. If you don't behave, I'm going to suspend you. I'm offering a reward. Come on, please um, do it for me, for the teacher. Uh, that's the rule. We stick to the... No, more and more, we should be saying things like, you're carrying the name of the school, you're carrying the name of our class. You are... The school is judged according to how they see what they see in you. Come on, study hard because that's the trademark of being a student of Mr. Rentoy, of Mrs. So, so, okay. So then, once and for all, let us solve the discipline problem. In the first place, sabi ko kanina, stop disciplining and start managing. You don't need to discipline if you know how to manage. And how do we manage? Procedures and routines that you teach and rehearse. Now, let's also talk about discipline. It's also good to have a discipline plan because believe it or not, the kids actually want discipline even more than you do. Believe me, no student would want to be in a class where they are in danger of being bullied, harassed, hurt by classmates, harmed, or even just disturbed. I mean, may mga, may mga ganong estudyante na um, they are very upset when they have classmates pasaway. And they get very upset when the teacher would have to stop teaching 
in order to discipline, para mag-sermon, para pagalitan ng class. Don't be unfair, teachers. Isa lang ang may kasalanan, siya lang ang kausapin mo. Huwag mong pagalitan niyo buong class. Because there are students there who get very affected when we do that. Diba? Sometimes it happens. We have heard of that. Not you, but you have heard of colleagues just because of one student or two in the class. Diba? The teacher will go on to um, reprimand yung buong class. Don't do that. That's unfair. Before I give the discipline plan, here are five myths of discipline. Limang kamalian, limang sinungalingan, limang hindi totoong bagay tungkol sa pagdidisiplina. Myth number one, do not smile until Christmas. <laughs> you know, we laugh at that. But I heard, I heard a senior teacher advising a young teacher, alam mo, wag kang ngingiti kasi pag ngumiti ka, the students will uh, take advantage of you. Will no, That's not true. That's a myth. Of course not. Remember yesterday in the class on advisory, in the session on advisory, I welcome my students on day one with my biggest, widest, fakest smile. As I welcome them to enter the classroom on day one, I would stand by the door and shake their hand. Then I will tell them, uh, I'm so happy to see you. You are lucky to be in this class. And I tell them all those lies. <laughs> Smile. Um, no, let's not be terror teachers that make the students terrified, terrorized, afraid. That's a myth. That's myth number one. Do not smile until Christmas. Here, here is myth number two. Alam mo, Mr. Rentoy, wala akong problema o discipline if only I am big and tough. Big and tough. I know that's not true. You don't have to be big. You don't have to be tough. You don't have to be scary in order to discipline the class. I know some uh, people, some, some teachers who are very big, very tough, but they are very motherly or very fatherly. I also know some who are very thin, very frail, well, but they are able to manage the class. Students behave. They do not push around the teacher. It's a myth. Here's myth number three. Alam mo, Mr. Rentoy, wala sa problema with discipline. If only you have the latest gadgets, the video projector, the nice laptop. Uh, okay, if your school can afford all those things, go ahead. They are fantastic tools. But that is not what, what will determine discipline inside the classroom. I was advisor, consultant to a school, an international school. Na pagpunta ko dun, wow, every classroom, walang video projector. Meron silang giant LED TV. Wow, ang ganda. HD TV. Hindi lang HD ready. Uh, it's HD but they have bullying in school. They have problems with discipline. They have students who break rules. You see, latest gadgets is not an assurance na wala kayo problema with discipline. That's a myth. Number four, myth number four. Alam mo, Mr. Dantoy, wala sana akong problema with discipline if only my students all come from middle class. Kasi the problems are in the yung mga sobrang mayayaman ano um, uh, they can uh, they can tell you how much is your school <laughs> i'm i'm going to buy your school and your friends <laughs> uh, or uh, ang problema is those in the poor communities na ang students have no self esteem no motivation no of course not. i've taught in schools with ultra rich families and i'm able to manage them it's not a problem of discipline. And I had students who, in UANP, I had students who take their lunch and dinner kasama ng mga tricycle drivers doon sa NEDA, malapit ni two buildings away. Kasi yun lang kaya nilang gastos. And I had students na as soon as magkaroon ng 
long weekend apa lilipad yan sa Hong Kong sa Singapore so it's not the rich or poor it's how you manage them middle class no that's a myth of discipline and finally here's number five myth kasi nung alingan hindi toto maling pag uh, aakala Mr. Entoy, I won't have discipline. With, I, I won't have problems with discipline because my students are my friends. Yan. And I see this among many young teachers trying too hard to speak the same language, trying too hard to be cool and chill and um, like them, eating with them in McDo, even drinking beer in a bar. Uh, because wala akong problema with discipline because they are my friends I make them friends here's something we need to tell all the teachers teachers you are not meant to be friends with your students you are meant to be a role model someone they will look up to someone they will imitate someone they want to become but not merely friends and that's a very important point to especially bring with young teachers, new teachers, na ang kala nila, uh, mag, wala silang problema kasi babal kadain nila ang kanilang studyantes high school sa sine. Don't. You're not meant to be friends with them. You're meant to be role models. Be friendly, very, very friendly, but you are not just meant to be friends with them. They're looking for role models they don't need more friends tingnan mo yung facebook nila ang dami na nilang friends thousands pa what they need is someone they will look up to someone they will respect someone they will and you know i've seen tragic ends to teacher trying too hard to be a friend to the students a manner of speaking we say we become friends right but no that's just a manner of speaking we should be first and foremost making ourselves models role models good examples our um, students and that's a world of difference friend is not the same as someone they will look up to those are the five myths of discipline and if you have teachers who fall into this into any of this myth i gising in ninyo at sabi you know shake them and make them realize uy Maling kasun, kasinungalingan ang pinaniniwalaan mo. Fake news yung nababalitaan mong tungkol sa do not smile until Christmas. And make them realize there are other better things of doing things, of um, managing and um, disciplining our students. Okay, let me describe to you now, for 17 p.m. now, let me describe to you four kinds of classrooms. Ito yung unang example of a classroom. Low control, low support. Low control now, the students, the teacher has low control of the class. May natutulog. Iisipin niya, ako, pagka pinagalitan ko to, baka magalit lang siya. Never mind, let him sleep. Low control, he will not control. Oh, may nag-uusap na dalawang sudyante dun. If I stop them, ako, they might not like me anymore. They might even get mad at Never mind, let talk. Low support. The students, on the other hand, don't like, don't support the teacher. In fact, they're saying, hindi ako matuto dito eh, kasi ang ingay ng class ko eh. Kasi pwedeng matulog oh. Oh, naglilipatan pa ng upuan oh, and the teacher cannot control. I don't like this teacher. And you are going to create a bored classroom, especially among the yung mga magagaling na sujante jan who are trying to be valedictorians and honor students. They are bored, and they 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 learn more when they read the book on their own. Because the teacher cannot control or doesn't know how to control. Here's another type of classroom: low control, high support. Low control now, you want to text, go ahead. Just make sure walang teacher na dumadaan na um, dahil bawal sa school lang nagta-texting. You want to eat, go ahead, but stay there para yung, pag dumaan yung principal, hindi ka mahuli. Ha? Uh, why is he not controlling the students? Ah, kasi may ganitong teacher trying too hard to be popular. 
para bang tumatakbo sa popularity contest trying too hard to be liked by the students so they don't control and they are after high support the te- the students like like the teacher because we okay tong teacher ah. we can do anything we want. we can even joke with a teacher we can even laugh with a teacher there are teachers who are like that ano? trying too hard to be liked by the students like as in ra- running in a popularity contest but again i tell you hindi lahat ng estudyante pare-pareho there are students there who are more mature and they see through the teacher and they say itong teacher na to nag trying hard to be liked and they get frustrated in both cases of course ang kawa yung bata ano kawawang bata sabi natin here's the third type of classroom high control low support high control now look at look at the board stop talking stop straight eyes here don't look outside inhale exhale ay ba talaga naman pati yung paghinga kailangan um, kontrolin niya no makita niya yung estudyante nakatingin sa labas why are you looking outside get out ayan <laughs> now minsan iniisip mo Uy, it works it works kasi pag pumasok ka sa classroom nitong teacher na to ito yung tinawag na terror teacher di ba pag pumasok ka abay napakatahimik napakatahimik parang cemeteryo parang lahat patay may walang gustong magresite <laughs> low high control low support they don't like that teacher they are terrified they are afraid they don't want to be there and they even say bakit kasi siya pa yung naging teacher natin ano but i tell you the students are just waiting for a chance to get back at that teacher <laughs> the students are waiting to be able to makapaghiganti how did they do it in school wide assemblies minsan pag nabanggit ang pangalan nitong teacher na to ang hiyawan ng mga estudyante is a different kind it's not a hiyawan of respect parang gusto nilang pahiyain that's their revenge that's their way of getting back now i tell you yesterday if you were with us in the class advisory i got my students to work to be honors 89% 90% of my students in my advisory class would be in the first second or third honors <coughs> And it's not because we lower the standards. It's because you want them to do what you, you get them to do what you want them to do. High control, high support. They do exactly what you want them to do <coughs> because they know you know what you're doing. They believe in you. You want them to participate in competitions, they will. You want them to win, they will. You want them to do outreach, a community service, they, they will. High control. You want them to be 100% attendance every day, no one being absent, they will. High control, high support. And of course, you're going to produce a successful class. Okay, so let's talk about the discipline plan. <clears throat> Sabi ko kanina, you don't need to discipline if you know how to manage. But it's good to have a discipline plan. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> But it's good to have a discipline plan. You know, I go around the, the country visiting schools and I ask them, Ma'am, sir, anong discipline plan nyo? Ah, meron kaming rules. Tapos, If they don't follow, ah, eh, they may punishment. Question, what if they follow the rules? Uh, wala, eh, di, hindi kami mag, mag, kailangang magalit na teacher. Ah, mali kayo, sabi ni Harry Wong. Your discipline plan should have rules, yes, but there should be positive, uh, negative consequences, but there should also be positive consequences. Because studies say, research says, you stand a better chance of making the students do what you want them to do 
if they are working to get a reward than to avoid a punishment. Get that idea very clear. You stand a better chance of getting the students to do, to follow the rules, if they are working to get a reward than just merely to avoid a punishment. Okay, I repeat what I said many times previously, the procedures are not rules, okay? They are simply what you want the students to do, to recite, to submit papers, to line up, to go to the cafeteria, your procedure to form a line, your procedure to march to the chapel. They are procedures, not rules. Here's Harry Wong's rule about rules. There should be not so many rules na hindi man lang nila ma-memorize. I mean, how can you make them follow the rules if they cannot even memorize it? That's why I mentioned this yesterday in the advisory session. Ideally, there should only be three to five rules inside the classroom, which you will explain to them at the start of the school year. And if they know the rules, they stand, I mean, you stand a better chance that they will follow the rules. If they memorize them, even better. That's why not more than five. Ever since I discovered this in 1990s, I always stuck to only having three rules in my class, even if the class is grade four or fourth year high school or fourth year college, I always only had three rules to give to my students. Now, uh, I'm not saying you should do this. I'm saying this is what I've done and it has worked very well for me. Three rules, no unnecessary noise, no unnecessary movement, come prepared for class. Okay, class, these are only the only three rules I need you to keep in mind, no unnecessary noise, no unnecessary movement, come prepared for class. And then I explain to them what each one means about talking to a classmate, tapping your ball pen, creating unnecessary noise, disturbing the others. Alam niyo mga high schoolers, di ba? Minsan, they tap their feet, their, their shoe um, on the floor. They don't realize nakaka-istorbo na sila ng kanilang mga classmates. Unnecessary movement like standing up without permission, um, going to their classmates. So uh, I make very clear all those rules. Come prepared for class. If I say bring out one fortune of paper, please make sure you have with you one ready, one fortune of paper so that you don't have to ask from your classmates. You see, because when they start asking for paper from their classmates, that creates noise that disturbs the peace inside the class. Rule, be ready. Your own one for sheet, one half sheet, one whole sheet. And then better yet, I always usually stick to, we will have a quiz every meeting with one for sheet of paper. Be ready with your one for sheet. So um, those rules, you can have whatever other rules you might want to have. Workshop for summer, sit down with your uh, co-teachers, maybe on the same year level, the same grade level, and then agree. Let's make this as our only rules. Better yet, again, kahit anong subject, kahit anong classroom, ang pasokin ng mga sudyante, the rules are the same. They know the expectations. Okay, so there should be, there should be more rewards than punishments. Here are some samples of rewards. Some of these applicable to preschool, some to grade school, all the way to high school, some even to college. Okay, take a look at this. Uh, by the way, the slide presentation, everything is downloadable in that Facebook page that I invited. I have been inviting the participants to go and become part of so that they can download the recording, the videos, the slide presentations, um, the Facebook page is Man Rentoy Download the Balls. Okay, that's the name. The address is www.facebook.com slash groups slash free download the balls. 
and you can download their many books, many PowerPoint presentations, many videos, including this one, which contains these samples. Now, I said kanina, some of these applicable to preschool, some others applicable to throughout, even professionals. I'm proud of you statement because you've come to class prepared. The presentation was fantastic. I'm proud of you. Good job, keep it up. That's a reward of following, especially rule number three, come prepared for class. Here are some more examples of rewards. <clears throat> okay, take a look at the list. I'll highlight one. Visit to principal for special acknowledgement, yeah. which is completely opposite of the punishment. Di ba minsan may mga ganyang teachers, ano? pag galit na galit na sila sa estudyante, hindi na nila alam kung paano parusahan at kung paano um, pagalitan. Get out, go to the principal's office. <laughs> I know some teachers who do that. Tapos yung bata, punta ng principal's office, sabi naman ng principal, oh, what are you doing here? Sasabihin ng bata, I don't know, ma'am, the teacher asked me to come. <laughs> Pero wala namang agreement with the principal. Pag may pinadala ko dito ang uh, estudyante, ah, it's a punishment. You have to reprimand the student. <laughs> no, me, in my case, it's a reward. I bring student achievers to the office of the principal. M Mr. Principal, these students were failing last month. Now, they are in the honors list. They deserve a pat in the back, a congratulations, an acknowledgement. It's a reward. Okay, so some of these applicable to preschool, others all the way to college or professional life even. Now, here are some samples of negative consequences, punishments. <clears throat> you take a look at it. Again, you can come up with as many of those Positive consequences, rewards, and negative consequences. Okay, let's take a look at more. Some applicable to preschool, others all the way to high school. Halimbawa, ng para sa mga bata, tape recording of tantrums. Ayan. <laughs> sa preschool, ano? pagka biglang nag-tantrum yung isang bata, record it. And then play it back for the parents. Let the parents be the one to teach, to reprimand, to correct the son, the daughter. Para pag sinabihan nyo yung parents, aba may proof ka, oh. ito ma mo, tingnan nyo. Kailangan niya ng reminder from you. Yan. Here are other consequences, negative ones. And I'm sure you will say, ay oo nga, nasa student's handbook namin yan. Suspension, detention. Um, non-readmission, di ba? Nandun yan sa ano, um, faculty manual or student's handbook or um, school policies. No? <clears throat> but the principle of Harry Wong, there should be more rewards than penalties. Huwag kalimutan yung prinsipyo na binigay ko, you stand a better chance of getting the students to do what you want them to do when they are working to get a reward than to avoid a punishment, okay? That's a very important principle. Okay, I'm nearing the end of this uh, session. Some concrete strategies I want to teach you in managing and disciplining. Sabi ni Hari Wong, itong classroom management seminars, alam mo, dapat ginagawa raw ito sa ballet studio where you have um, mirrors all around because the most powerful the most powerful uh, strategy you should learn and master is the stair yeah. look at the best teachers you've had you remember may mga teachers kayo na isang tingin lang sa class isang tingin lang the stair sa class aba tatahimik yung class some of them, some of the students will even say, Uy, quiet, quiet, si ma'am, galit na. Not that he's angry or she's angry, it's just that na perfect niya, the art of stare. Sabi ni Hari Wong, that's the most um, powerful, most effective tool 
to use in disciplining. Pero, hindi mo alam ang hitsura mo when you stare. Kaya dapat practicing mo yan sa harap ng salamin. And you have to discover it. You will realize you have a certain stare that can say, para bang nagsasabing, hayop kayong mga demonyo, kayong mga sindyante, kayo sang lupalop ng impyano, kayo ng galing. <laughs> that kind of stare. But there is also the kind of stare that says, oh come on, I expect better than this. Oh come on guys, I expect best behavior. Look at yourself in the mirror and try to see what stare, what kind of expression, where the muscles are when you are giving that kind of stare that delivers the message. Come on, guys. I expect better than this. I expect you to, be, to behave your best. Oh, come on. You can do better than this. Look for that stare. Perfect it and use it without any use of words, shouting, screaming, yelling without any word coming out of your mouth, but simply looking at the students, which will make them keep quiet, listen, and behave. It works. I mean, really, I tell you, once you discover the perfect stare as your master teachers, teachers you had in the past who were so great, effective, efficient, ang galing ano, isang tingin lang, nakukuha nila sa isang tingin ng mga estudyante. They can get the class to keep quiet just by standing. Well, it's actually a procedure. Class, here's the procedure if I want you to keep quiet. I stand with my arms like that. That already means, come on, keep quiet. I need silence in three, two, and one. Well, it's a form of procedure, the stare without saying any word, to get the students to do what you want them to do. Here's another strategy. And I was so happy when I learned that the best teachers in the world use it. Harry Wong used it. Rafe Esquith, our reference yesterday in the advisory and in the kind and caring classroom, used it. Ron Clark, uh, the... Um, one of the best teachers alive now. Um, you know, teachers, sometimes the only thing you need to keep on going is inspiration. If you want an inspiring teacher movie, please look for in the YouTube Ron Clark story. The Ron Clark story. Ron, R-O-N, Clark, C-L-A-R-K. The Ron Clark story starring Matthew Perry. It's a fantastic, highly inspiring movie on his first year as a teacher. Today, he is one of the most successful and most important young teachers, not even 50 years old, I think. And he put up the Ron Clark Academy in Atlanta, visited by thousands of teachers from all over the world. And he uses a lot of amazing strategies and he makes it a point to admit students, uh, more than half of them, who are below average, but all of them end up to be high achievers by the end of their stay in the Ron Clark Academy. Watch it if you want to look, if you're looking for uh, something to inspire your faculty, your teachers, the Ron Clark Academy. Okay, now, what is the check system? <clears throat> I used it many times and it works. Remember, sabi ko, you have to put in place a system where you don't even have to say, John, sit down. Jonah, sit up straight. Uh, James, I sit on the board. Uh, try, to count, try to put together all the time that you have to say that. Uh, sit down, sit up straight, eyes on the board, keep quiet. How many times you have to tell you? You put them all together and that's a lot of time wasted. And not to mention, you get tired. You get tired saying that. Kaya pala at the end of the day, parang pagod na pagod ka. All because you had to say 228 times. Sit down, sit up straight, eyes on the board. When here is a strategy where you don't have to use, where, where you don't have to say those things. Okay, here's the check system. Okay, class, I explain it. Here's the check system. 
every time I see any one of you breaking any of my three rules, talking out of turns, talking without permission, standing up without permission, all those three rules that I mentioned earlier, every time uh, you choose to break any of my rules, I will not stop my lesson. I will not stop lecturing. I just go to the board and write your name. When you see your name, that's a warning. No punishment, no sanction, just a warning. If the second time around, you choose to break any of my rules, I go to the board. I don't stop my lecture. I put a check mark beside it. That means five minutes of detention in recess or lunch, whichever is coming up next, or dismissal. Five minutes. A second check mark beside your name means you will have to spend 15 minutes of detention in the recess, in lunch, or in the dismissal time, whichever is coming up next. A third check mark means you have to come back on Saturday for detention. A fourth check mark means I will have to call up your parents. For example, let's put it to um, a situation. Okay, class, this is English, and I am teaching subject verb agreement okay subject verb agreement you know um, if the subject is uh, if the subject is singular the verb should be singular if the subject is plural the verb should be plural and then i notice jan and joey talking they chose to break rule number one i don't stop my lecture i go to the board with my i calmly pick up the pen or the marker and I calmly go to the board and write their names while still lecturing subject verb agreement, ver uh, subject singular. I write the name of John and Joey. And John and Joey will see it. Since I explained very clearly to them at the start of the uh, implementation of the check system what the three rules mean, they will stop talking. They know it's just a warning. No punishment, it's just a warning. I continue my lecture. However, there are some words that are always singular. For example, someone, somebody, no one, nobody, nothing. And then I notice John and Joey talking again. I don't get mad. I don't stop lecturing. I just calmly go to the board and put one check mark beside the name of John and Joey because they have again chosen to break one of my rules. But I tell you, once they see their name written on the board as a warning, they will behave like angels for the rest of the period because they wouldn't want to see the check mark. They wouldn't want the detention. It works. It works. Where you don't have to. Here's the principle of Harry Wong do not stop academic time in order to discipline, do not waste teaching time in order to discipline. And this is one way of doing it. You see, you spare yourself of having to say again and again, John, Joey, stop talking. John, Joey, eyes on the board. Sit up straight, eyes here, no moving. You don't need to say those things, which are very tiring, really come to think of it, especially if you will have to repeat it fifth times you get very tired at the end of the day, okay? Now, sometimes I offer a reward, okay, class? If this week I will never have to write a name on the board for warning, if this week I never have to stop in order to put a check mark um, because one of you has chosen to break one of my rules, if this week, I will never have to do a check um, um, warning on the board. Then we will watch a video next week related to the subject that we are covering. You stand a better chance of getting the students to do what you want them to do when they are working to get a reward than to avoid a punishment. It works. It works. That's a very important principle. Um, to keep in mind. Here's another strategy. <clears throat> We're down to the last few minutes. Stopwatch system. It's a reward system. Now, some of you might be thinking, I, 
Ms. Rentoy, kala ko ba kanina yung reward is just the second level of moral development? Yeah, we're talking about that on the personal level. I want a reward for myself. This one is the reward as a class. And they are working together as a team. Naku, class ha, come on. Classmates, come on. Don't break any rule. Uh, para we get the class um, reward, class recognition, class um, award. So they are not thinking about themselves only, which is the second level of moral development kanina na pinag-usapan natin. Now they are thinking as a class. And they are going to cooperate, support each other, um, because we are all in this together. Here's the subwatch system. Okay, class, it's the start of the month. I have a clock here that has a countdown and it has 50 minutes. So, kasi 50 minute periods kami. Every period has 50 minutes. So, I tell them, okay, class, start of the month, look at this. You have 50 minutes of reward waiting for you. But remember, every time somebody chooses to break a rule, I will have to click it and it starts counting down. You start losing seconds from the 50 minutes, okay? And this is how it works. Similar to the check system. Subject verb agreement, if subject is singular, the verb should be singular. If the subject is plural, I notice John and Joey talking. I calmly pick up the clock and still talking. If the subject is plural, and then I click it, <clears throat> it starts counting down. And John and Joey, of course, you know what will happen. The whole class will look at John and Joey and the whole class will say, John, we keep quiet. The clock, the clock. Ayan. Because they don't want to lose, lose seconds. And then when I see that John and Joey are repentant and they are giving signal of, sorry, ma'am, sorry, sir. I stop it. I stop the clock. They have just made the class lose seven seconds of rewards. I continue discussing. And in the middle of my discussion, some, some subjects are always singular, like someone, somebody, something, no one, nobody. Joanna start, stands up, breaking, choosing to break rule number two of no unnecessary movement. I don't get mad. I don't stop my teaching. I don't get upset. I just calmly pick up the clock, raise it, and click it. And of course, Joanna will realize, oops, she made a mistake. She will run back to her chair. She will send me a signal of sorry. I stop the clock. Joanna has just made the class lose four seconds from the reward. So it's like that. Day after day, just calmly picking up the clock, clicking it. If somebody has chosen to break any of my rules, I never would have to say, John, keep quiet. Joanna, sit up straight. I sit on the board. What are you looking at outside? The no, nothing of that. Just calmly click the clock and click it, and they will do what you want them to do. Now, here's the, the, what makes it successful. At the end of the month, whatever is left of the rewards clock, you have to give them. I, let's say, 45 minutes left. Because for the whole month, um, because of the repeated uh, you know, students choosing to break some of my rules, now wala nang five minutes. 45 minutes left. I'm now going to give a menu of rewards to choose from. And dapat very attractive yung menu. For example, 45 minutes left class, here are the choices. 45 minutes of video to watch related to the subject matter we are discussing. 45 minutes of quiz B. I'm going to split you into groups. We will have quiz B. The questions will come from the lessons we've been taking up. 45 minutes of treasure hunt. I'm going to hide clues in the gym. Two teams, the first team that can find all the clues and piece together a sentence statement related to the lesson we're taking up wins the game. 45 minutes, I will not even hesitate to add in the menu. 45 minutes of funny videos, nothing related to the lesson, but because I never had to stop my teaching in order to discipline, we managed to finish everything we need to finish ahead of time. 45 minutes of funny videos, 45 minutes of watching 
a scary movie, 45 minutes of free time. We go to the gym, you have 45 minutes to play if you want, to, uh, or read if you want, 45 minutes of free reading, meaning to say, bring to school whatever you want to read. It can be comic books even, it can be 45 minutes of reward. It works, it works. Because you stand a better chance of students doing what you want them to do when they are working together to get a reward, okay? So that is, now again, I emphasize, it's not the reward system. It's not a reward of the second level of moral development, but a system by which class work together to achieve uh, something. Um, that is how you create a culture of a kindness and caring and um, creating a class of um, students who are working together to achieve a, um, um, the excellence, the kindness, the success that you are looking for in a classroom. And chances are when you have a kind and caring classroom, discipline is not a problem. That's why, um, well, that's the final word that I want to suggest to you, that I want to share with you. The, the session we had on creating a kind and caring classroom effectively brings about a disciplined class where students care for each other and um, make sure that no one is um, um, marginalized. You have two roads. Uh, um, you have a road that leads to two paths in front of you. One leads up to a destination where there is no character. Students there use each other, abuse each other, step on each other's toes, fight against each other. There's another road that leads to another path uh, that leads to a destination where the students or the people there have character. They're good. They know they are not all equally talented. That's why the stronger one supports the weaker ones. The better um, intellectually, uh, those who have better intellectual capacities, they help those who need more time, who need more support because they have character. And that's a question that you know makes us think. Uh, okay, so. All the things I taught you this whole week, no? I mean, really admit it, it's not very easy. They will mean more work for us. <coughs> but where, <coughs> what, kind, what kind of classroom do you want to produce? I think the answer is very clear. <coughs> of course, we want a classroom where people have character. They support each other. They um, make sure that everyone is successful. And that's what this whole week seminar has been all about. Creating a kind and caring school, creating a school where um, students will feel safe and will not be afraid uh, because they know they have the support of their classmates. Okay, that brings us to an end. I'm going to now type in the chat box the link to the certificates that you can click in order to um, 
in order to claim your certificate. Okay. Um, I'll type. I'll type it again. Okay. There you are. <clears throat> Click on the link so that you can fill up the form. Please don't make mistake in the spelling so that you don't have to send an email. Um, when you write your name, as it appears there, that's what will appear in the certificate. So uh, make sure you get the spelling right. Okay, it has been a fantastic week for me, um, partly in Manila, partly here in Iloilo, being with you, being able to share with you all these strategies, techniques, to create a kind and caring classroom. Uh, let me stop.